Welcome back to Design Build Launch Part 8. This is the last part of this course where we are going to finish this website and publish it. If you missed the last video where we created this page transition, there is a link on the screen now or down in the description. So get caught up and let's go ahead and get started. The first effect we're gonna add to all of the pages. So we want all of the pages to drop in from the top and have a nice little animation. So with the desktop selected, go down to effects, hit the plus, and for all pages, we want to add a custom one. So we'll go here into any page and edit this. The opacity will set to one, and then everything else will leave the same except the Y offset. This will set to negative 1000, which will push it up and out of the way, so it will slide in. And then for the ease, we'll set the time on this 2.5, just to slow it down a little bit. And if we hit preview, I go to the work page, you'll see it slides down from the top. Now for the home page in particular, we have a few things we wanna set up here. Let's first select this H1 intuitive text, and then we'll go to effects, apply and appear effect, then on appear, we're gonna go down to the effect itself and edit it, and we'll set the Y offset to 150. Then for the transition, we'll swap this over to easing, set it to ease out. And then I'm going to add a slight delay to this just because we have the page transition. So we wanna make sure all of the green bars are out of the way before this happens. So I'm gonna set this to one second and one millisecond, so 1.1. And for the time, we want it to be nice and smooth, so we'll slow it down to 0.7. I'm simply gonna right click on this and copy it, and then select the next two texts, right click and paste that. And then for the minimalistic one, we'll go to the delay, and we'll increase it to 1.2. And then for the final text, UI design, we'll increase its delay to 1.3. Next, in our layers, we'll select the left and right columns there, and we'll add an effect here or up here. Here, we'll set the offset to 200, which is gonna push them both to the right for now, and then we'll adjust the easing. So we'll set this to ease, ease out, and 0.7. So basically, we're keeping most of these things the same, and then for the delay, 1.3. Three, so it comes in at the same time as the last heading does. Now, since we apply this to both at the same time, the left one's being pushed over the wrong direction. So we need to select it itself and then go and set it to a negative 200 on the offset, which will push it off the screen. So both are coming in from off the screen now. So if we hit preview here, that is our result. The next thing we want to add an interaction to is the video block section. So I'm just gonna select the video itself, go to effects, and on scroll transforms. So while we're scrolling with this layer in view as the trigger, we'll set the from to one opacity. The scale is gonna be slightly smaller, so 0.8, and everything else can be the same. And then for the two, we'll set everything to one, and that will just set it back to the scale we see here. So as we scroll down, it's gonna start off a little bit smaller than usual, and then it's going to grow in size. And since I've done this, it's showing us the hero in the background. So what we need to do is go over to the video section, and we need to apply a fill to this, and we'll just add the 900 colored fill. So now we will not be able to see the hero in the background as that animation is going. So that looks great. Finally, let's add a little bit of motion to this text here just to spice this up, and then we'll move on to the next page. So we have our paragraphs set up here in this paragraph wrap group. So I'm going to select both of these paragraph wraps, and then we'll go to the next info section, and we'll grab these other two. So we're gonna apply this all at once to these. For the effect, we'll add a scroll transform, and this is again going to be the layer in view. So when it's in the view, we want this to happen. And from where do we want this? So first we want the opacity to be zero, and I like the scale just to be at one. And then we're going to push the offset over to 200. And then we just need to make sure that two is set to one, one, and the offset is set to zero, so it returns to its original position. 
So as we scroll down now, we have our text sliding in just like so. So now that we are completely done designing, adding the interactions, adding the cursor effects, everything to this home page that we need to do, we can go here to the loader, right click on our loader and hit show. So now when we preview this, we'll actually see our loader, which is what we want. And this looks really nice. You'll see the animation is perfectly timed right after the loader gets out of the way. Everything is nice and smooth. Now for the work section, we're gonna add two effects. So when we get to this page, when we load in from another page, it's gonna slide down from the bottom. Uh, but we want this to look a little better as we're scrolling down. Right now, it just kind of looks really static. So what we'll do here is in the layers panel, we're gonna go down to the desktop and we'll grab project. And this is the container that we have all of our CMS data in. So with that selected, we're going to add a scroll effect to this. So here we'll go to scroll animation this time, layer in view, we do want to replay this and this preset will swap to custom. So let's go ahead and select the enter. And here I'm gonna make sure that it's 0% opacity, one scale, then we'll change the easing. And since this is coming into view, we want to ease in. And again, I'm gonna slow it down to 0.7 just like I am with most things, just adds a little bit of smoothness to it. And if we back out of that, we have this lock here, so the exit and enter are linked together, so it will be the exact same effect there, which is what we want. So if we hit play here, you can see as I scroll in, one fades out as the next one fades in, makes this look already a lot nicer. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the image here, and we're gonna go and add a, another effect to this, and we're gonna go up here. Again, we'll set this to custom, so we'll go zero, one, but let's set the Y offset to 900. And then of course, we're gonna change this to ease out, so it's nice and smooth, ease out. Uh, but I am going to have a 0.5 second delay. Now that delay is allowing our page transition animation to completely finish, and then this will happen. And for this, we'll set it to, let's try 0.7 and see how that looks. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Finally, one thing I was going to forget to do was add the nice effects to the text. This is really going to make this polished. So we'll select the title, go to effects, and we're going to go with appear once again. And then we'll go down to 96 on the offset. Then changing this over to our normal settings of ease out, the time is 0.7. And then we need a 1.1 second delay. Then we'll select each one of our skills holding shift apply and appear. We're going to drop it down 24 since these aren't very tall. And then we'll swap this over to ease out 0.7. And then for the original delay, we'll set it to 1.1. And then if you select the second skill, we're going to increase the delay by 0.1 each time. So this is 1.2. The third one will be 1.3. And then the final one will be 1.4. So now this looks much nicer. And since we're done with everything here on the work page, of course, we need to make sure we go to our loader and show this. The next page we have is the project pages themselves. Here we're gonna apply some effects that are gonna make this look real nice when it fades in here on the text. So we'll grab the title, add an appear effect on this one, and we'll drop this down 96, which is just the height of that text. So it's gonna slide it down about 100%. And then we'll go to the easing, set it to ease out. Again, we're gonna add a delay just to make sure the page transition goes off. And then we'll set this to 0.7. Then we're gonna grab each one of these texts individually. So I'm gonna hold shift and grab each one. We'll add a appear effect to this and we'll set it to an ease out. For the time again, 0.7. And for the delay, we're gonna set all of them to 1.1 to start off. And then we need to make sure we set the offset to 24. I forgot to do that. It's just gonna push them down a little bit. And then we can select the second text, so skill two. And on the delay, we're gonna hit 1.2. Then for the next one, it's gonna be 1.3. And then for the last one, it will be 1.4. So they're just gonna follow each other by 0.1 seconds. So you'll see that nice fade in there. And that's pretty much all we need to do here. So since we're done here, again, we need to make sure we right click and show our 
page transition. And then we can adjust our final page. So go to contact. And I'm going to grab the text here. And we'll just add a simple up here on this. Drop it down like 150 or so just to push it down a ways. And then set the easing to, of course, ease out time 0.7. And then we're going to add that 1.1 delay, which is just going to make sure our page transition has time. And then we'll show the page transition. And we're done. The next thing we're going to add is pretty popular with like award winning websites. It's a smooth scrolling effect. This is optional if you want to add it, but it's a super easy implementation. I'll leave a link to this down in the description below. No point in remaking the wheel here. We can just get it from the guys over at Framer University. Just hit copy component. And then here in our homepage, I'll just hit command V to paste this. And then I'm just going to place this at the very top of our desktop. And when you have this selected, there is an intensity down here. And this is how much do you want the page to keep scrolling when the user releases the mouse. That's all the smooth scrolling is going to do. For mine, I'm going to set it to a very subtle five just because I don't want it to be crazy. Like if you set this thing all the way up to the 100, I'll show you what this looks like. As you scroll, I've already released my mouse and it's still scrolling. So it's just going to scroll a little bit longer and make it smooth. I'll just set it to an intensity of five. Next, we just copy this component and then just add it to each one of our pages. And I'm going to add it to the top of the desktop. And just like that, all of our pages will now have our smooth scrolling. With that, we are ready to head over to the settings. So up here is the settings icon. I'm just going to select this. And this is where we can set up all of our website things for publishing, like our site title, our description. We can add fave icons and we can actually add how things will look on social previews, how it will look if you have this as an app icon. Super cool stuff here. And it gives you all of the recommended sizes for each one of these. So you can custom make this in Figma if you would like. For this video series, I'm just going to give this a quick site title and description. I just kind of quickly typed this up. I would highly suggest for SEO, you really think about the keywords you're going to put in this and maybe do some research on SEO to get the best successful results out of this. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to put that in. I'm going to add a language. Now that we've set these site settings, you want to make sure you go to each one of your pages and update this. This is incredibly important for SEO. So you want your homepage to basically be your overall description and title. And then for each work page and the project page, you'll see here the project name is generated, but you'll want to make sure you put something after this and pay attention to your page description. This will just make sure you're higher ranked on Google when people are searching for these keywords and for someone with your particular skill set. I'm going to hit save and then let's publish and update. Again, this is going to that staging link here. Which leads into the next part. If you want to add a custom domain, there is a domains tab. You can get a free subdomain here, or you can connect your own custom domain here as well. That's going to do it for this course. I hope you guys enjoyed the process of building a website with Framer. I tried to make this course as jam packed full of features from Framer as I could. If you like this series and you want to see more videos like this here on my channel, make sure you give it a like. Special thanks to Framer for sponsoring this entire course and making it free to you here on YouTube. Make sure you check out Framer with the link at the top of the description. That's going to do it for me. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.